So again, in this video, we're going to show that the set of positive rational numbers is countable. So in other terms, we're going to show that the set of positive rational numbers has as many numbers in it as there are positive integers, or integers even in the first place. So um, it doesn't matter whether it's positive integers or integers, we show that those two sets also are equal in size. So again, you're not responsible for building this proof. You're just supposed to kind of understand how the proof works, because you'll be able to see it again and understand it a little bit more next time. So first of all, what I'm going to do is make a list of all the possible integer, uh, sorry, all the possible rational numbers. And the way I'm going to do that is by starting with one over one like this. And then I'm going to put one over two. And then I'm going to put one over three. And then one over four and so on and so forth. So the first line in my proof is going to have all numerator ones and denominators that increase by one every time. Now the second line is going to have two on all the numerators. And on the denominator is going to be again, one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. So, you know, there's more integers that I'm not writing, or sorry, I keep saying integers, I want to say rationals, there are more rational numbers that I'm not including, but that's how the table starts. And so in this way, I'm going to organize every possible positive rational number. So on the third line, it's going to be three on all the numerators, because that tells me it's the third line. And on the denominator, there's the one, two, three, and so on and so forth. That tells me the position that I'm in in that line. So let's do four over one, four over two, and so on. So keep in mind what our goal is. Our goal is to basically count every number in this list basically once. And keep in mind that this list actually extends down forever, right? I mean, I stopped on row number six, but it goes down forever just like it goes to the right forever. So there are more numbers that go in this list. But I'm going to count them like this. I'm going to start with this guy over here, and I'm going to count them once. So that's the first number in my list. And I'm going to go across, and one half is the first number I see after. Then I'm going to count that as number two. And then I'm going to go down diagonally. And two over one is different than the previous two. So I'm going to count him as the third number. So Who's number one? It's the one over one. Who's the number two? It's basically one half. Who's number three? It's two over one. And then from there, I'm going to go down and count three over one. That's going to be considered number four. So that's the fourth number in my world. Now, I'm going to go back up. However, two over two is the same number as one over one. So I'm just going to ignore it. I'm going to go straight to it to one over three. One over three is different than three over one. It's different than 2 over 1, it's different than 1 half, it's different than 1 over 1. So he's a new number in my list that hasn't been counted, so I'm going to count him as number 5. So he's the fifth number in my world. And I'm going to go across to 1 fourth, that's a brand new number, I'm going to call him number 6. Then I'm going to go down again. So from 1 fourth down to 2 thirds, he is going to be considered number 7. 3 half is a brand new one. I haven't seen it before. So I'm going to count them as number 8. And 4 over 1 is going to be the ninth guy in my list. They're all brand new. So now down to 5 over 1. So as you can see, there's a predictable pattern that's happening here. Okay. Now let's go back across. 4 over 2 is the same number as 2. That's the same one as number 3 right there in the list. So ignore it. 3 over 3 is the same number as 1, which is the first one that I bubbled. So I'm going to ignore it. 2 over 4, when you reduce it, it becomes 1 half, which is identical to the second number that I counted. So I'm going to ignore it. I don't want to have duplicates. So I'm going to go from 5 over 1 all the way straight to the 1 fifth. So 5 over 1 was the 10th number that I counted. Now this is the 11th number that I counted. And I'm just going to move across once. That's the number 12th number and then go back down. Two fifth is a brand new one. Circle it and give it the number 13. And three over four is a brand new one that I haven't seen before. So I'm gonna call them number 14. And then again, this is the number 15. Um, this is five over two, it's brand new. I haven't seen it before. So it's number 16 and so on and so forth. So this is the 17th integer or the 17th um, number that I counted, and then I go across, down, and then come back up, and so on. So this is what the proof is going to look like, basically. So what is my function doing? My function is basically seeing an 
a positive rational number, so like the 1 over 1 or the 1 over 2 or the 1 over 3 or the 2 over 3, and it's assigning a value to them that is a positive integer. And it's doing that for every possible rational number that is positive. Now even the 2 over 2, you would think like I skipped it, but really 2 over 2 was 1 over 1. So it got counted. Don't worry about it. It's a duplicate of 1 that I already have, so it gets counted. It's assigned the same number as before. It's the number 1. Same thing with the 3 over 3. It's assigned number 1. And so I don't have to like basically think about it because I've already taken care of 1 over 1, which is the same as 2 over 2, which is the same 3 over 3, and so on and so forth. So in this way, the function that I'm doing in blue is basically a function that takes all of the positive integers and assigns to them a positive integer. That's the number, basically. And since I'm assigning to every possible rational number a positive integer, that means that the set of positive rational numbers is countable. So this shows that the set of possible um, positive rational numbers is countable. Again, it's not a, exactly um, a full formal proof. We're not giving you the name of the function f of x. I'm not telling you how it's doing the way, in the way it's count. I'm just kind of describing the count to you, and I'm telling you, here's the recipe. And if you want to keep further, going further, you could just extend the table a little bit more and just keep going from there. But that's the gist of things.